this thing's going today. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I pretty much covered it all on Wednesday. Yeah. Cowboys are a great team. They have a, great, a lot of great players. Good, great organization. And, uh, you know, be a big challenge for us on Sunday. So that's what we're getting ready for. That's what it's going to take. Understanding you won't want to give away the game plan, how has Isaiah Wynn looked and what's a realistic expectation for what you might get from him? Yeah, we'll see how it goes um, you know, today. We've had you know, a couple of days and then kind of put everything together and see how, see how things turned out after the first two days. You know, sometimes guys do a little more, they are good, and sometimes you know, a little soreness or maybe a little, I won't say setback, but maybe it's not, you know, when it all comes together, it doesn't come together as quickly. Um, as it might in other cases, so we'll see how it goes today. And just how would you say he's responded since being back at practice, taking a multiple week <coughs> snapshot where you've had him back on the Good, team? yeah, good. Yeah, Isaiah always works hard. Um, you know, he did a lot of scout team work uh, to you know, get his timing back and all that, so working against the defense. But yeah, he works hard. He's always ready to go. Okay. For the running back like James White, how much thought is, is just put into managing his workload and making sure he's not touching the ball like too much in the season? Yeah, I don't know. Let's, I think you look at the whole position as a group. We have a lot of good players at that position, a lot of guys that contribute. Um, so, some of that. It's determined by the way the game goes. Some of it's maybe you try to have a plan for, but sometimes those plans work out, sometimes they don't. So I think the main thing for the players is to be ready to go, be ready in the situations that we need them for, which is, I'd say for those guys, pretty much everybody's ready in every position, uh, in every situation, sorry. And then we'll play them as we feel like it's best to play the game. So. Uh, I think it's hard for if you tell a player oh, this is you're going to predetermine this is what it is, and then you get in the game, and then something comes up, uh, the score, the situation, uh, an injury, whatever happens, and his role changes, that he's not ready. Then it's like, well, you you didn't you told me to be ready for this, and something else came up, so you get him ready for everything. Take it game by game. One more. But with how well your special teams has played uh, over the last couple weeks, especially last week in Philly, do you think you have a, a significant advantage going into Sunday <coughs> considering the Cowboys are you know, amongst the bottom of the league in terms of uh, kickoff return and punt return? Yeah, I don't think anybody has any advantage going into the game. I think that's why you, you play the game and you kick the ball off and find out. Um, I don't think last week means anything one way or the other for either team. I think this game will be decided by what happens this Sunday starting at 425 or whatever time the game starts over the next three hours. I think that's what's important, not what some stats are, you know, what somebody did some other week. I don't really think, I mean, what difference does it make? It's, it's all about the competition this Sunday. So we'll find out. Um, Cowboys certainly have a lot of outstanding players and very explosive returners, coverage players, kickers at four field goals over 60 yards. No team in the league, I don't think, can say that. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I have a lot of respect for their special teams units, their players, uh, and their entire organization. But we'll see on Sunday. Tara Sullivan. Um, Phil, Thanksgiving's less than a week away. I'm just wondering if, in your mind, has it always been associated, family and football together, if you have a favorite memory, and if I could follow that up with just the notion of maybe your gratitude, if that's the right word, of just how much you clearly and apparently still love your job after this many years of doing it? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's always had a very strong association with our family. The Army-Navy game was played the Saturday after Thanksgiving. That's always the way it was, other than, um, um, you know, in 1963 when President Kennedy got assassinated. So that was, what, 50, um, 60 some years ago today whatever it was. So, um, so yeah, Thanksgiving was Thursday. Um, Philadelphia, or the trip to Philadelphia was Friday, and the Army-Navy game was Saturday, and that's the way I grew up. So, um, yeah, I'd say football is 
pretty pretty big part of it. Um, we uh, in high school always had a traditional Thanksgiving Day game in Annapolis Severna Park. Uh, it's always good to beat the Falcons there. Um, but Did you win all four? no, unfortunately not. No. Um, no, it was very competitive, but it was it was you know it was Thanksgiving. It was a great um, like it is here in Massachusetts. A lot of Thanksgiving games at the. You know, great for high school football and all that. So uh, as I got older, I, you know, I didn't do that when I was younger, but as I got older um, and played in those games, then so yeah, I remember the, the Thanksgiving Day um, high school games. So yeah, it's always been a, a part of it. Uh, certainly when I was at the Lions and we had the two Thanksgiving games out there, the home games, uh, my first, second, and third year in a league, those were um, – Ultimately, that's the ultimate Thanksgiving game. There's really nothing like that, and the way the uh, the city supports that game and what it means to the Lions and and just that game in general. Then we played in it, um, you know, at the Patriots played the Lions. So, you know, that really kind of put the exclamation point on that whole day. You know, Thanksgiving, turkey, football. Um, so, yeah, but um, yeah, very appreciative of all the things that come with Thanksgiving, but as they specifically relate to football, um, definitely the opportunity to participate and be a part of it, um, to watch the other games that are played then, and um, you know the camaraderie that it brings, just even family sitting around watching a game. It's not your game, or if you don't have a specific rooting interest necessarily in the game, um, just you know being together with your family and friends that time of year. Are you an easy or a hard guy to watch a game with? Do you pretty easy? You don't say much, or do you help people? What you're seeing? Uh, well, again, that, there's usually not too much, not too involved in those games. I mean, if you were talking about an Army Navy game or something, that'd be a little different story. But yeah, and you know, when I was growing up, there were two or three games on Thanksgiving: in Nebraska, Oklahoma, I think was one of them; um, Texas, Texas A&M, I think was another one. Um, I wouldn't say I had a real strong rooting interest in those games. So, you know, I mean, they were great to watch, but it's what they didn't have a, you know, uh, real connection to what, what else was the thing. I mean, Ohio State and Michigan and those games were the Saturday before Thanksgiving. That was really the, that was really the last Saturday of college football, you know, in the 60s and, and early 70s. And then Thanksgiving was the, you know, there were a few games on Thanksgiving, and then Army-Navy was the Saturday after Thanksgiving. That was really the last game of the college football season, and that was that was the big one. So that's kind of the way it went for me. Kevin Lazar? How do you see the Kyle Noy just kind of embrace playing more on the line of scrimmage this year? And what skills does he have that allow him to be effective uh, playing on the ball a little bit more? Yeah, Kyle's played on and off for us. Um, so I think he's he's very natural playing on the line of scrimmage, but he can certainly play off the line. He's done plenty of that as well. Uh, so it's a tough skill set to have. There's not a lot of players I think that can do that. We're fortunate that we have several of them, but uh, it's it's not easy to see the game from off the ball, in front of the ball, and outside uh, looking in on the line. It's kind of two two different pictures, but um, you know he he does a very good job of it. He's a very instinctive player and has a very good spatial awareness for, for when he's outside and when, as an outside player, you end up back inside, like covering hook zones and things like that in passing games. So, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that that's something that um, we've taught him. Um, it, we've certainly taught him and tried to teach him those things, but I think he had an instinctiveness for that when he, when he got here, and then it's, it's grown and he's built on it, but it's something that I've always felt has come pretty naturally to him. Uh, so, you know, he did that at Detroit. He mainly played inside of Detroit, played outside in college, played inside of Detroit, and then, you know, we've used them both in both spots, maybe a little more outside this year than inside, but he, he can definitely do both. <laughs> How important is it to uh, have guys like him that can set the edge against the run? That's yeah, critical. Yeah, that's it's a critical part of the defense. And again, we've had a number of fortunate. We have a number of players that can do that. Uh, Kyle and you know Jamie, who's played inside. John, uh, Shalik, Chase. You know, High can go out there and do it. He's done it. Does it in certain situations for us. So uh, that versatility between 
um, having a number of guys who can do that, as well as some of our defensive ends, but a number of guys can do that. And then some of those players who can also uh, double up and play inside, like Kyle, like Jamie, uh, like Hightower. Um, you know, those guys just give you more versatility to your defense and, you know, enable you to, you know, manage and solve problems that you have to solve. So we have, we're very fortunate to have the, a, a number of guys that can, can do that. I'm not saying they all have the exact same skill set, but they have the ability to, to play both inside and outside of the defense, and it's not easy to do. Henry McKenna? Um, Bill, do you have a sense of the status for Mohamed Sanu and, and Philip Dorsett for this weekend? I have a sense, yeah. Can you share? Yeah, we'll share when the injury report comes out after practice. We'll make sure you get a copy, 100%. Um, sure. As far as... Uh, no point in guessing on it. Might as well go out and practice and see what they can do and then, you know, make an accurate report. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and try to, you know, Ouija board it here this morning and tell you how a guy's going to feel before he's gone out there and done anything. I, I mean, that wouldn't be responsible on my part. As far as uh, with those two players being uncertain, um, do you have a um, confidence in Jacoby and Nikhil if, in the event that they would need to step up? Yeah, well, again, it's that's the way it is in every game. I mean, you can go into every game with, you know, the 46 players and three plays into the game. It could be a different, you know, not all those players may be available. So, you know, you have to have depth on your roster to handle whatever situations come up, and you know, we'll do our best to do that in all phases of the game. That's the way it is every week. Andrew Callahan. Uh, Bill, you touched upon the winning tradition of the Cowboys on, on Wednesday. I'm curious if you see any other through lines from you know the teams back with Coach Landry through the years, 80s, 90s, and commonalities to the team you see today. You talk about winning teams. You're talking about a lot of good players, you know, very, very talented players. Um, you go back to the 70s, the 80s. Um, yeah, got got a number of guys in the Hall of Fame. Got a number of great players from all those years. You got some great players on this team that are going to be, you know, let's say already amongst the top at their position in the league. Now, some of them are very young, or certainly in what's called the first half of their career. Um, so it's a very, and then there are other guys who are, you know, more veteran players that, you know, have had great careers too, as like Witten and Sean Lee, guys like that that, you know, have played. Play good football for the Cowboys for for a long time, uh, so they're a well balanced team, um, but they're they're a very talented team. Um, they play well under pressure, and they're very well coached, as they were with Coach Landry, Coach Johnson, Jason. A good situational team. They, you know, they make you work for everything, make you earn everything. You know, I like I don't think there's any team in the league that's had fewer line of scrimmage penalties than the Cowboys have offensively. They don't false start. They don't have illegal formations. They don't have illegal shifts. They don't, they don't do any of that. So, you know, I think that's the mark of a well-coached, well-disciplined, you know, unit. And so that's, you know, some teams will maybe help you out defensively with, you know, some penalties in those situations where you don't have to really do anything. Just stand over on the other side of the ball and, you know, they make some mistakes. You, you're not going to get that from Dallas. They're not going to, you know, make those kind of mistakes, fumble snaps and stuff like that. They just don't do it. So, well coached, well disciplined, a lot of good players. Derek Nick Sarah has obviously been in the organization for quite a while now. How do his, how does his role and responsibilities continue to grow? Uh, well, yeah, Nick's got such a great, um, he has a vast uh, amount of experience and talent in a number of different areas. So depending on what our needs are, and uh, that could be a little bit week to week, but it's, I'd say probably more season to season that he can do so many different things and do them well that we can um, utilize him in the areas where he'll have the biggest impact and the most effect on uh, positive results for our team. And so we've always done that. We've continued to do it. He's you know, coached multiple positions, had multiple responsibilities in the personnel department, continues to have a strong role in, in both areas. Um, and sometimes it's maybe a little more or a little less in one area or another to 
you know, offset expanded duties on the other side is also involved in a lot of contract things. So, you know, it's a pretty, pretty full plate. Sometimes it gets divided differently, but um, it's usually full and sometimes spilling over the edge a little bit. But, you know, he does a great job in all those areas and it's been extremely valuable to me um, on so many levels for, for such a long time. Um, and again, when things pop up that, that need to be done and it's hard to find maybe a younger person, less, exper less experienced person on, on your staff or in your organization to do those things, you look at him and say, okay, he can do them. And then that maybe allows you to shuffle some things in other areas. So. How has his role changed this, this season in particular? Yeah, he's doing a, you know, I'd say a number of things differently this year. Um, so, um, you know, the, the details on that would be a, you know, much longer conversation, but it's, it's different this year. Um, it's, it's been different from year to year, you know, and that's not a good or a bad thing. Sometimes our needs and our um, points of emphasis change uh, and our staff structure changes. So as those things move and he's there and he's able to, to, you know, support us in different areas. I mean, he's, look, Nick's very unselfish, works very hard. He's smart, talented, and has a great deal of experience, you know, across the board. So he can pretty much do anything, but not do everything. So we have to you know, pick out the things that have the biggest impact. Last question, Tara Sullivan. If you would just indulge one more, other than football, what's your favorite Thanksgiving side dish? <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty much everything. There's not much food that I don't like, so. I could we start with dessert, and then, but got to leave room for everything else. So, yeah, it's great. It's a great holiday. It's a great holiday. Football, family, and football. I mean, football, family, and food. So, yeah, sign me up. Um, okay, great. Thank you. All right, we'll see you Sunday. A couple changes with the coaches being